everybody. We got the truck all warmed up. We got hooked up to our trailer again. We're about to take off towards Kenora. I went home for the night. It was nice. I love it when I'm able to sneak home during the week for a sleep. But now we're going to Kenora. No clue where I'm going from there yet, which reminds me, I should probably contact uh, the load gods here and ask them, hey, where am I going? So I'm gonna do that and uh, we'll head on down the road. We're about uh, two hours away from Kenora and I'll have to tarp it. It's a lumber load that I'll have to tarp. Lots of work being done here between the Manitoba border and Kenora, Ontario. I believe they're twinning it all the way up to Kenora, which is awesome. I've only been saying we should do that for the past, I don't know, 15, 17 years. But I understand it's a lot of money. I can't imagine the amount of money that's going into this. Building a highway here through the hills and rock of Northern Ontario has gotta be just ridiculously expensive. But I'm glad we're finally like investing the money here for us. And very often, you know, there's these huge dollar amounts that leave the country and go elsewhere overseas. And sometimes that's necessary, but most times I would love for that to be spent on projects like this, making life better for us here. Up ahead here, they're uh, blasting out some rock again, it looks like. That is neat. Much cheaper to build roads on the prairies. You don't gotta do all of this stuff. <laughs> I'm excited to see it get done. I'm sure they'll have it done in the next 20 years. So hopefully before the end of my career, I'll be able to drive on this new twin highway. It's gonna be great, looking forward to it. One hundred meters, slide right on, veterans drive, highway six fifty eight and then approaching destination on the left side, in two hundred and sixty meters. Approaching destination in two hundred meters on the left side. Arrived at your destination on the left side, 1775 Veterans Drive. Oh no! Quick! Quick! Turn right! Quick! Right now! So the last time I fueled up was in Saskatoon and then we pulled that loaded van trailer all the way to our yard, home just south of Winnipeg. And then I picked up this empty step deck and pulled it here to Kenora. So we'll see what kind of fuel economy we did. We did a lot better because I wasn't fighting the wind all the way home yesterday with that van trailer, but it was still like a big parachute billboard behind me catching all the wind, so. It's that time of year again. Makes us appreciate the summertime a lot more. The numbers are in. So, from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan to Kenora, Ontario here, was 1,126 kilometers or 699 miles. In that time, I burnt 433.05 liters or 114.4 US gallons. That equaled out to 38.46 liters per 100 kilometers or 6.12 miles per US gallon. The cost of fuel around these parts right now is going for about 
well, $2.20 per liter. That would equal $952.28 Canadian from Saskatoon to Kenora. $952.28 or $707.49 US. So that costed me in Canadian funds 85 cents a kilometer or $1.36 per mile running down the road. Now those totals would be, what is, it, what is this, 85 cents, 85 cents Canadian. So it costed me 63 cents US per kilometer, or in numbers that my American friends understand, a dollar and one cent US per mile yesterday is what it costed me to uh, fuel this truck and deliver that freight and get here. So those are the numbers for my last tank of fuel. We're still burning close to uh, between, you know, $900 and $1,000 a day in fuel at these fuel prices. Averaging anywhere from, you know, that, that's on an average day of about 1,000 kilometers. So, or 600, 600 miles, give or take. And I'm still hitting my target of 6 miles per gallon. We just got above it, 6.12. So it's, we're doing pretty good. Uh, for Old Blue, that's a good good number we like to stay above six and don't forget just the cost of fuel per mile is not the actual cost of running this truck per mile on top of that you have insurance which is over a thousand dollars a month I believe it's about fourteen hundred dollars a month that I have right now on this truck uh, registration all these IFTA stickers my uh, permits it equals out to be a few thousand dollars extra every month that gets added on there are several thousand dollars and then on top of that i still need to eat we need to pay our mortgage we need to pay for our house have a little bit put to put into savings and then the maintenance on this truck yet so it equals out to be quite a bit more per mile to operate this truck but uh, i just share with you the fuel costs because that's sort of the talk of the town right now you know with fuel being so expensive people like to know well what does it actually cost to fuel a truck like that going down the road now you know. Maybe one day we'll go over all the other expenses. I'll be sure to warn you so that you're sitting down first. There's not much profit margins. I mean, we have a little bit of money to put into savings, that's true. But you gotta be very careful with your money. What do they call it, a frugal spender? I can tell you this, you don't get into trucking to become Elon Musk and get rich. You do it because you love it. And because it has to be done, someone's gotta do it. People need their stuff. And you can make pretty good money. I'm not saying you're gonna be poor. You'll, you're, you're gonna be actually living above average in most cases. But that doesn't mean you can't, you don't have to be careful with your money and you know, budget properly. But uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, you don't wanna get into trucking and expect to own a yacht one day. That's not really in the cards. But it sure is fun. Not gonna lie about that. I love my job. I wouldn't wanna do anything else. And I wouldn't wanna be driving any other truck. That's what's most important. That's what's priceless. Do you enjoy your job? Do you enjoy what you do? Does going to work feel like going to work? Not everybody can say that they enjoy what they do. That's sad, because I wish everybody could. wage in Canada right now is it something like $38,000 a year or 40,000 somewhere around $40,000 a year right you'll make well over that in trucking whether you're a company driver owner operator you'll make more than that you'll you'll make above the median income of the country so it is a good job to have there's a lot of sacrifices you got to make to be on the road all the time though so continue on this road for 11 kilometers with all the sacrifices being away from family and stuff you know you'd hope it would pay above average
took a few hours, but we got loaded and tarped. This guy's in a hurry. Yikes. We're on our way to Brainerd, Minnesota. They unload there until 10 p.m. and I'm hoping to be there by about, about about four hours or so. So it's three, four, five, six, four, by about seven, seven thirty is when I want to arrive there. So I shouldn't have any problem getting unloaded. I don't have any plans yet from there, but things can change quickly. It's quarter to three now, so I'll be hearing from the office soon. You may have noticed the throne for the weasel is gone. I brought Diesel home last night. He's having a little bit of a hard time on the road. He's gotten pretty used to being at home with his family and he's gotten quite a bit older. This is my load. They had to load it like this so that uh, was legal weight wise. It's uh, special lumber underneath there. And the way it's loaded here, I couldn't get away with just two tarps or the back of that top stack would be exposed. So I had to use all three tarps today, which takes a little bit of extra time, but that yeah, is what it is. Yeah, it's just me on the road this week or for the rest of this week. What is it, a Wednesday? Is it a Thursday and Friday yet? start snowing. I mean, it's snowing a little bit right now already, so I hope it doesn't get any worse than this. Had enough of snow for, uh, I think the rest of my life. I think I'm, I'm done with it. Yep. If I never saw snow again, I'd be okay. Perfectly fine. into Minnesota. This is International Falls, Minnesota. Nice little town here right at the border. And I'm gonna have to wait for this 
this SUV. Looks like they know. Nice. They knew what they were doing. I like that. They didn't sit there and stare at me wondering what I was doing or what I was waiting for. <laughs> So I've got my marching orders for tomorrow. We're doing another one of these. So as soon as I'm unloaded tonight, I'm gonna head straight back to Kenora and sleep Continue there. Continue on this road for 18 kilometers. And then tomorrow morning, we'll uh, load up another one, go back down to Brainerd. It's back to back. on the right here just after these lights take a look at that Christmas lights that makes me so happy oh and we get a stop and look at them too the one time I'm happy for a stoplight look at that right there Is that that big smoky bear behind this bright sign there see it those are the same Christmas lights that Steinbeck decorates with stinks here though. I think this is a paper plant here. These paper plants always stink so much. It's not me, believe me. If it was me, I'd claim it. That's, that's not me. I have a much better brand of smell than that. That's... Whew. Reminds me of Dryden, Ontario. Their paper plant there always stinks uptown too. That's why I recognize the smell right away. It must be a paper plant. So we don't want to waste any time. We got to get to Brainerd. We got to get unloaded. We got to get back to Kenora before we run out of hours. Crossing the border going pretty smooth today. Looked at my paperwork. They uh, searched my truck. Did a quick little search through it. They they often do at this border crossing. What happens is I go inside the building while they check out my paperwork and my passport. And then another officer comes and sort of rummages through my truck a little bit here. Doesn't bother me, I got nothing to hide. They gotta do what they gotta do, right? They got a job to do. As long as they don't break anything, and they never have, never have. The worst they've done is they've walked into my truck with their dirty boots. <laughs> I've always hated that. But uh, I have towels down on my floor now anyway, all the time. So when they do mess up my floor, at least I can just take the towels home and wash them. It's not my actual floor. But even that's pretty rare. They don't really, I don't know, they just check around. They probably look in my cooler to see if I have any fruit. And uh, maybe look into my bag to make sure I'm not hiding any kids in there or something. I got that big blue bag in the back, right? And they want to see in the truck to make sure I'm not trying to like smuggle people across the border. I'm out of hours. I'm here in Brainerd, Minnesota, and uh, I had like 16 minutes left while I was getting unloaded. So I parked right here, pretty much outside their building. Uh, there's some parking on the street. This is where I'm gonna have to stay. There's supposed to be a big snowstorm rolling in tomorrow. Of course there is. Why is it snowing in Minnesota and Ontario tomorrow? Oh, that's right, because Trucker Josh is in Minnesota and Ontario. That's why, I'm so sorry guys, I'm sorry. He follows me everywhere. It's driving me nuts already. So, because of the snowstorm, what's likely gonna happen is I'm gonna run up to Kenora tomorrow pick up the load and then go home hopefully before the snowstorm gets too bad we're supposed to get like 20 to 30 centimeters or one to two feet of snow depending on where you are it's supposed to be pretty bad we're gonna see how it how it looks tomorrow because that can change but right now it's looking like it's gonna be pretty bad in the afternoon tomorrow and evening and overnight into friday so i've got to talk to dispatch yet uh, just to confirm this but what i think is going to happen is i'm going to go to kenora pick up the load take it home and then wait for the storm to pass and then on Sunday head out to Brainerd from home and uh, deliver it Monday morning. Friday is Remembrance Day in Canada. It's Veterans Day here in the US so everything's closed anyway. So if it's storming tomorrow, I'm not going to be able to get back here in time 
to get unloaded anyways because I'm going to get stuck in the storm. And I've been stuck in a snowstorm two weekends in a row already. I don't want to make it a third. So it's that time of year where we got to keep looking at the forecast and making our decisions based on that the best we can. I really don't want to risk it again. I've had enough snow already for this season and uh, I know it's just going to keep snowing and snowing and snowing until next spring. So we got to try to avoid it when we can, when it gets really bad and not risk getting stuck in the middle of nowhere because this road is pretty remote. It's not as remote as going north, but between uh, Kenora and Brainerd here, it's a two lane road, not very many places to park. And if the storm gets really bad, it can get pretty dangerous. So we'll see. I'm not afraid of driving in the snow. If it's just snowing, I don't mind. Heavy snowfall, I don't mind. But a storm like with wind gusts and uh, blowing snow, bad visibility, I prefer not to. Uh, I kind of have this thing about living till I'm old. Like I want to live longer yet and I don't want to end my life now in a snowstorm because I thought I could make it. So I have a pretty high threshold. Like I said, I'll drive through the snow. I'll drive through heavy falling snow. It's when it starts blowing around, visibility goes down. And at night when it's snowing, it's hard to see as well. But we'll see tomorrow. I'll make the call tomorrow and we'll see what happens. But that's likely what we'll do. Then we'll go home tomorrow night, which is Thursday night. I'll be home Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. We'll begin our week next week. I'm tired of snow already. I'm tired of it. And it's only November. It's not even winter yet. Winter starts December 21st, right? <laughs> ha! Yeah. That's where we're at. But thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Uh, I appreciate you watching my videos and uh, listening to what I have to say. And I appreciate you coming back here every day. If you're new, uh, welcome here. Uh, more info about me is down below in the description. You can click the little button that says more below my video. There's a whole bunch of stuff down there. You can find all my social media. You can follow me on all the social media uh, other than YouTube. And I post videos here uh, almost every day, as much as I can anyways, just showing my life as a truck driver up here uh, uh, between Canada and the U.S. Or Canada, Southern Canada and Southwestern Canada and Northwestern U.S. That's usually where I'm. Uh, you, you know what I mean. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Guys, uh, the algorithm really likes it when you hit that like button. If you don't mind hitting that on your way out. And if you have a little bit extra time, leave me a comment down below. Tell me a little something about yourself. Helps, helps out a lot. The more engagement I get on my video, the more YouTube recommends it to new people. And uh, that's good. I'm terrible at ending these vlogs. Good night.